Hi everyone, now I've been tying, uh, basically I'll just show you one or two flies with the turkey bite. It was requests that I was actually getting, uh, and I got two or three for some reason for the turkey bite uh, flies, uh, whether it be a dry uh, or whether it be uh, a nymph. Now I have this one here, uh, this is what I've got, two or three versions I'm going to show you. And I'm always aware wondering what's the length of the tail in the fly to do, uh, and the nymph especially, especially when you're using turkey by it. Um, this one I've got it quite long just to see, I've tied a couple to get an idea of, because it's not, I, I do use the turkey by it, but I normally just put a tackle fibre on. Uh, but the, it's very popular, as in this case, as you can see, uh, to give the impression of legs as well as a tail. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll see how it works out. As I say, I don't usually do a lot of these, but we'll, we'll work out. Um, we'll, we'll get a good fly out of it. So. Now, before we go any further, we've got your lead. If you want to add weight to the fly, you can use wire or you can use, uh, in this case, this is uh, it's a lead foil. This is from uh, Vineyards. Now, I'm going to cut a length about just over a mil, mil and a half, two mil. Uh, just so I can form the body. So I just use a long pair of scissors, it's much easier. It has obviously a, a back, a back into it, so you remove that. Now, just to give an idea, I mean, don't throw this away. Uh, it makes a great uh, body rib. Uh, I've used it in buzzers before. Now if you stretch it, if you want it thinner, it stretches well, it's strong. As you can see, it reduces by a good bit, and uh, it's lovely, it's a nice white, so don't throw that away, keep it for buzzers or for underbodies or anything like that, or even if you want a white body or a white rib, it's actually ideal, and that's what I use it for as a, as a rib for a buzzer. Now, what I'm going to do here is this is a lead foil, so I just two thirds of the way down, catching the lead, and I wind up towards the eye, touching turns. Now the head length away, I start to wind back down. About not all the way, it's because I'm a thorax length. I'm just going to break it off. And at the back, I'm going to do the same. That's just a wee bit too long. So I'm just going to lift it up and trim it to the length I want, which is there. And then just use the back of my nail to flatten it down. Yeah, just use my nail like a burnishing tool, as they would call it. Red colour, now it could be a grey. Now I actually like, in this fly, I'm going to tie like it's an Adam's colour. Uh, Adam's, it's Adam's, uh, what do you call it, turkey bite colour I'm using. So basically it's the Adam's nymph. Uh, this is a light Cahill. I like this, it's a nice pale yeah, yellow. Now as we catch it the eye, we start to wind down to keep the waist end tight. And as you wind down, it should basically help you to keep the thread turns touching and cover the lead. And when you get to the back and onto the, the base, onto the hook, just we can trim away. We have missed a couple of bits, but don't worry about that. We can obviously we're going to cover that with some dubbing. Now I've got the turkey bite here. This is the Adam's colour. I'm going to show you this one's from Orvis. See, turkey bites, Adam's grey. Now, originally I bought this for tiny Adam's as a dry fly, but it's it's good for nymphs as well, obviously. Uh, so what I'm going to do is the smaller fibres are no good for the body. Well, you could use them, but uh, I'm actually going to use for the for the legs and the tail and the thorax cover, believe it or not. So I'm going to take two out. You know, turn them upside down. And then the tail length, this is where I'm always wondering how long to do the tail. Now I want these to curve away. So I want to be able to tie them onto the, practically the bare hook and use the shank of the hook or the bend to keep them apart. Length, as I say, is... I'm looking at it. 
I'm always moving them around. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I don't like them. If it, when you put a long fibre on, they tend to actually break if they're too long. You want them slightly curving away, at least they're going to do a bit of moving. Uh, anyway, I'm going to trim this the length of the body, which is halfway up or so. And then I'm going to get one of the longer ones, which is you'll find when you look at the stem, they're further, they're further up. So I've actually trimmed one away and I've got the longer one here. So I'm going to tear it off. And then when you tie these on, tie them with the, there's a fine fibre on one edge, in this case it's in the top. The underside or the bottom edge doesn't have any fibre on it. It's just a fine herald if you want to call it that. So I'm just going to catch this on. And the way up. Just the very point, and we're just going to tidy things up. So we're like this point there, and then to protect the the bite, I'm going to wind it over some fine super glue. Just make sure you get enough on there, and this will protect the the turkey bite. Now as you. But having that fine edge or the, the hero or the fibre on that edge, when you bring it over the top it will go towards the back. I encourage that. Uh, there's a turn there. And then as you work up, it's going to probably these are very close turns. You'll see that fine fibre that gives a turkey bite body that lovely look. That nymph light look, uh, and even a dry fly. I'm actually going to take it further than I'm going to, and uh, see an extra turn or so up. Then I'm going to catch it on a good three or four turns before I do anything. You can see the body you get, you've got a nice enough tail there, it's tapering. I'm going to trim that away. Oops, I've got some lead on there. Yeah. Some wax on my thread here to give me extra grip. Now you want to be beside your body here. I'm going to tie in again. We're going to go back to the turkey bite because I'm going to use the whole thing to tie the fly. Practically, except for the the only two things that's different is the is the dubbing for the thorax and the the thread. So I've got the smaller fibre at the base here. So I'm going to tear it off and then. What I'm going to do is just trim this. This is a wee curl that comes off with the stem of the feather. I'm just going to trim it so I can tie it on so it's not too much. I'm going to trim it on. I'll tie it on the top with the natural curl going up and away from the hook so that when it comes over it, it kind of forms round the thorax. I'm making sure I'm at the point where I want the thorax to start. Now you can do a wee test run, just bring it over. See where you are. If you're too far round, I'm actually, I think I'm actually uh, too far on your side. So it's quite simple. Go back. Let's bring it on to my side a wee bit. And then bring it round. Try again, just to see. That's a wee bit better, that looks. Center. I mean, it is slightly off. Most people are not doing it this, but I quite like it. So I'm going to make sure it's tied on. Take my thread back to the, say, basically the head length away. Now I'm going to use a dubbin. This is a, a blend of my own. This is just a about a UV flash and just a rabbit fur, just from the body, blended together. You don't need a lot. Because we've got a nice thick body, we just need enough to give the impression of a bit of colour and uh, obviously I quite like to actually see the keyhole thread coming through. Now I like to bring the, the dubbing from the eye up, stretching out as I wind. I say I don't want it too, too heavy, like wind the way up. I say stretch it out. Now what I like to do, I do like to see the thread, so what I'll do is I'll take away some of the dubbing. And the way back through, I'm actually going to run 
I like Cahill thread through it, which is acting like a rib. Plus you can see it a wee bit better. Just going to have a wee quick look here. I've got some fibres that are a bit long, so I can trim them away. That's fine. You can stroke it back. Yeah, put a wee bit of wax on my thread. Tidy that area up. Again, as I say, I'm going to use this the small bias here. Again, I'm going to use this for the legs. This was a question I got asked. Could I tie a fly using the, mainly for the legs as well as the tail? And you could use uh, goose bias. So I've got two lengths here. I've got the natural curve. With the ends are lined up. Uh, there's a couple of ways you could tie it in. Now I want the curl of these to come away from the the, the actual thorax, so I'm going to fold it so hopefully they'll come away down either side. Get two or three turns there. Let me check. See how they are. Looking at the length. You could go shorter than that and you could keep them like that. This is where I start again, much like the tail. Well, I'm just going to keep it. So I'm actually going to tighten up. And then I'm going to break off these ends. I've got a curl, I've got a couple of wee, end, wee bit waist ends there, so I can come back in. Just stroke them back with your fingers and put a thread turn, stretch the thread around it. And don't be shy with a hairy a nymph. So we can bring the thorax cover over. Again, do a few turns, get a wee stretch. And they come down, right to the eye, really tight, come back up, and then tear it off. And there we are, that's a wee bit neater. Now, I, I actually like to do this, I don't know if it's a bit, some people maybe think it's funny, but the same dubbing that I've got in the thorax, I'm going to take some of this, and I'm actually making sure I've got a strand of the, the UV there, but with some of the dubbing. Now, dub it onto my thread, nice and light, slide it up, and just put it at the head area. I found this works. Uh, something I like to do, I've done it in even wet flies, and I've done it in buzzers, I've done it in a lot of things. And then, once you've done that, you have got a varnish on your thread. Just making sure there's Fibre out of the way, just come in. Right, finish. Use my nail here, make sure it's tight. Just all I'm doing is pulling the thread as tight as I can, or as tight as you can go anyway. Just drawing it back, trim away my thread, and there we are. See what it's like. That's okay. Uh, you can curl the tail with your nail, but just to get it to move a wee bit better, but that's, that's it. Just checking the fibre, there's quite a few fibre in here, so I'm just going to come under. Just be careful you don't trim away your goose bite, oh yeah, sorry, not your goose bite, your turkey bite. As I say, you could use goose bite. It's slightly thicker, but I'm just sticking to the turkey, everyone's, everyone's there. It's the same colour. And that's just basically a wee Adam's nymph. It's a good colour combination. I've had flies or fish on colours like this. Uh, what do you think? Ugh, it's not too bad. I've seen worse. Be happy to fish that. I would say this one's just a wee bit further down. I think it's just maybe the dubbing that's caught that. You know, that is. That's there. When you're putting dubbing on, sometimes it lifts the, the by or catches it. Same when you do the tail, uh, the body. That first turn can catch your tail and draw it round slightly. So it make, just make sure you're slightly uh, up a wee bit. So anyway, there we are. It's just a, as I say, it was a question that got asked about tying uh, with turkey bites. I've already tied the dry fly, so this is the nymph. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. 
and again, thanks for watching. Thank you.